fun. Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodemont, and over there we got Christopher Draves. Hey, guys. Thank you for all watching. And over here we have Little Alex. Little Alex making his first appearance on From Milwaukee to Nashville show. Yep, we're making his kids popular. Yep, and he is officially five months today, and he loves his little Prince head. But in all uh, note, he can get... Hey, Alex, be cute. Yeah, he's a natural. <laughs> yep. He's a little cute, baby. We do the Simba. Ah! <laughs> he's looking like, wow, what is my dad doing to me? All righty. So in today's uh, news, check out Hockey Locker, 202 West Hart Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. They'll outfit you with all your hockey needs, and they'll even give you referee gear if you're blind and you're qualified to play referee. Ha, I stole your bit, Dan. <laughs> yeah, but if you also need your ice skate sharpened, they do that as well. They do it by hand. So, uh, yeah, you'll get great customer service and tell them that we sent you. I like that. Hey, hey. All right, Dan, let's dive into the show. we? All right, stats. Oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, time. while you're here, so please subscribe and uh, hit that bell so you get notified every time we upload a video on YouTube. And please go over to our Facebook page and hit like and follow. Yeah, we have a lot of content there that you can't get on YouTube. So it's best if you subscribe and like both of our things. All right, let's get into some stats. Uh, Detroit Red Wings outshot the Predators 26-23 for a game. Uh, Predators won 54% of the face-offs. Uh, Red Wings had only 46% face-offs won. Uh, the Predators were 1 for 4 on the power play. The Red Wings were 0 for 4. Uh, penalty minutes were even at 8 apiece. Uh, the Predators out-hit the Red Wings 15 to 12. It was a pretty uh, physical game from what I could tell. A bit heart-wrenching at the end of each period. That's when all the fireworks started happening. Uh, block shots were 16-14 for the Predators, and giveaways were 6-5 for the Red Wings. All right, Dan, do you think? All right, so um, shots in the first period were 9-8 to eight Detroit. Shots in the second period were 8-7 to seven Detroit. Shots in the third period were 8 – or sorry, 10-7 to seven in the second and 8-7 to seven in the third for Nashville. Scoring. Let's get into that. Scoring in the first period was Ryan Ellis with his second at the 14.58 mark on the power play with an assist from Forsberg, which was a beautiful pass, which was all set up by the move that Yossi had made. And Forsberg has his sixth assist and Yossi has his fifth. Now, at the 19.25 mark, Robbie Fabri scored. Uh, his third um, with an assist from Anthony Manta, his fourth, and uh, Horonic, his seventh at, the, like I said, the 1925 mark. This is a trend that happened literally all game. At the end of each period, that's when the scoring happened. Can I read the second period? Go ahead. All right, Matt Duchesne at the 1919 mark of the second gets his third goal of the year with an assist from Cali Yarncroak, his second, and Roman Yossi, his sixth. And then Mark Stahl of the Red Wings got his second of the year at the 1933 mark with an assist from Bobby Ryan, his fourth, and Namistikov? Namistikov. Yeah, his second assist. At, yeah. And now in the third period, Dan go. Scoring in the third period was Dante Fabro with his second, with an assist from Luke Cunning and Philip Forsberg, Cunning's first of the year, and Forsberg's seventh at the 19 minute mark of the third. Yeah. See what I mean? At the end of each period, that's when the action happened. Three stars of the game where a third star was Ryan Ellis with a goal. Uh, second star was Roman Yossi with two assists, and the first star of the game was with the game-winning goal, Dante Fabro. Um, uh, goalies. In net for uh, Detroit was Tomas Grice. Uh, he stopped 20 of 23, uh, 16 of 18 even strength, and two of three on the power play, as well as two shots shorthanded. Um, he had a save percentage of 
0. 0.870. So he stopped 87%. Yeah, he, he Thomas Grice played great. I mean, it, it, he was solid in that for Detroit. Detroit, they're going to be a team to reckon with in a couple of years. They're clearly not there yet, but they're building towards something good. All right, and that for the Nashville Predators, uh, Pekka Rene, he stopped 21 of 23 on even strength, 2-2 two two on the power play, 1-1 one one on the shorthand, uh, with an overall save total of 24 of 26. He had a 92.3 save percentage. Um, also, with this win, he moves into 20th all-time in goalie wins. Congratulations, Pekka. Well-deserved. Um, Well-deserved. Uh, referees were Trevor Hansen and Jake Brink. Uh, linesmen were Kyle Flemington and Yanni Murray. Head coach for Detroit is Jeff Boshill. Uh Head coach for Nashville is John Hines. Uh, scratches for Detroit were Luke Glenn Denning, uh, Valtteri Filfila, and Danny DeKaiser. Uh, scratch for Nashville is Ben Harper. Yeah. Um, um, in other news. I feel bad for the Buffalo Sabres. With all the I'm wearing a Buffalo going. Sabres jersey. Um, before Nashville came into the league from 1992 to 1999, um, my family originates from Buffalo. I am a huge Buffalo Sabres fan, and I loved watching Dominic Hasek play. And, and I, we're supposed to cheer up Buffalo, not remind them of their past success. I'm, I'm getting to that. I'm okay. just explaining why I like Buffalo Yeah. before I get into that. Okay. Um, I, I liked watching him play, and they do have one of the best color commentators in the game. Um, I don't watch enough of their games. Yeah, so I'm not trying to take a shot either. I literally don't watch enough Buffalo games. Uh, the reason we feel bad for Buffalo is N New Jersey got COVID, and because of the non game day COVID testing, which changed today, that is a rule that changed today. Yeah, if you want, we could probably dive into that at a different time. Um, uh, basically, all that changed in the COVID protocol is every team has to do a day um, in the morning, a day of rapid COVID test. Yeah. Um, otherwise, if you refuse to do so, you do not play. That's oh, okay. Your yeah, but those, but those rapid play. tests aren't as accurate, so that could backfire still. I'm not sure if people are aware of that, but the rapid COVID testing is not as accurate as the ones they've been using. Yeah, but they're they're running out of options to keep some of the players and maybe, if not, coaching staff, families, and friends safe, so... Honestly, the minute one player from New Jersey went on to list all those games against Buffalo that week and should have been called off, but they let the games play and look at it. It just wiped out two teams that haven't played in about two weeks now. And that's um, not an exaggeration. It's been like two weeks since Buffalo's played. They have not played since uh, January 31st. Uh, so um, in, a, in a way, I do feel bad for them. Wait, the um, league started in January? I thought the league started up again in February. No, the league started January 16th. Oh, okay, okay. We've wow, been so doing this over for, a month. For, for, for almost a month now. Okay. But <laughs> um, it's still, it's been a long time, dude. Um, Jesse Pugliarvi was the first person with rapid COVID testing to come back as a positive test. Um, that's why the Edmonton-Montreal game got pushed back an hour. Only an hour? Yeah. Okay. What, did they want to test them again or something? Because they know they wanted to test the whole team. Yeah, because of the inaccuracy of those rapid tests. Yep. So as soon as they were given the all clear, uh, Edmonton went to the arena. They play, they're they playing currently. Um. Uh, at this point in, in all of this, my crap list tonight has no one on it. But COVID. COVID. Um, COVID is a long mainstay and will stay there until I go to a hockey game. Hey, uh, what's your uh, take on the Predators getting two points and uh, trying to scratch and claw their way into the fourth position in the uh, division? Because that's key right now, trying to get to at least that fourth spot for a playoff appearance. We were only like two or three points out, so this is a big step. Also, you got to remember, okay, so this was game 14 in the year? Yeah, 15? I do believe. Yeah. 14 or 15. 
All right. Yeah. There are teams ahead of us that have only played 10 or 11. But it's still a big step to gain these the, points. The, the thing is, is this is just one game. And, and, and like, I wanted, I didn't want to have to say this, but if Detroit shows up, that cancels out that win. Yeah. If Detroit shows up on Saturday and beats us, no, I'm not saying they didn't show up because they did. They yeah. played. They played hard. Um, Especially their goalie, man. Tomas Grice, that guy played incredible tonight. I tip my hat to him. My hat to him. He played good. But I think at this point, when you when you kind of look at the situation that we're all in, if 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 it's gonna be we could only beat bad teams, well, guess what? We're only gonna win against Detroit. Yeah. And 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 here's the thing: I don't dis- try to discredit Detroit. Detroit's a good young team, but that's the key word there. They're young. They're inexperienced. Nashville has a little bit of experience with the youth that they have. Yeah. So it's not like these guys don't know. I mean, in hockey's a game. If you've been playing since you were a kid, you already know what you have to do. The second you get on the ice, you play your game, you play the coaching, the coach's style. Anyway, um, I just think at this point, you know, um, looking at tonight, you had the worst power play against the worst penalty kill. Of course, their power play is much worse than our penalty kill is. Their power play was sitting at 6%. Yeah. Nashville's power play is sitting at 16 now after tonight with the one. But All right, well, uh, we'll be back at it tomorrow, or at least I'll be. I do believe I'm going to be flying solo covering the Everblades in South Carolina tomorrow. Correct. And then you'll be back with me on Saturday because we have two games to cover Saturday. And we will be live, live on YouTube and on Facebook that night so oh, yeah saturday i plan on being in the same room as him i miss being over to punch him on camera <laughs> anyway i would like to thank you all for watching um oh also i i would like to uh take a moment here at the end of the video and wish my condolences to brian sales family uh he is a long time uh athletic and equipment trainer for the uh, milwaukee admirals of 20 years uh he passed away last night um, his, and his uh, his dad is uh, the uh, director of operations for the Milwaukee Wave, who which me and Chris enjoy going to their games, except for when Chris hears Baby Shark or the Blackhawks goal song. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, we have fun. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I last time I talked to him was right before COVID hit, and uh, he's just a wonderful guy to talk to. So you talked person. to him back in March, roughly? Yeah. So right before COVID, obviously he had some health issues and I just wish his family, you know, uh, a recovery. He was young too, wasn't he? Huh? He was young too, wasn't he? He was in his early 50s. That's still considered young, dude. Early 50s, it's still young. Um, But I I would just like to wish my condolences. uh, If anybody would like to say anything on our video, please feel free to comment. I will make sure that uh, his family sees it. So um, uh, feel free and uh, have a good night. I will talk to you guys later. Thank you for watching. Peace.